But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Let me tell you about my great God. Hey guys, Tim here. Hope you're ready to get your day started off right in God's Word. We are on 2 Samuel chapter 2 today. We just started off in our uh, journey through the book of... Did I say 2 Samuel? By all means, guys, I'm, I'm so sorry. I meant 1 Samuel. All right, I'm human. You're going to see me mess up like that probably all the time. I should probably fix it in the editing, uh, but we're just going to continue right on. We are in 1 Samuel chapter 2. We started our journey in 1 Samuel yesterday, and we're continuing it on today. But anyway, 1 Samuel chapter 2, if you haven't read it yet, by all means, pause the video. In fact, before you pause the video, if you haven't read it yet, I'm going to encourage you. Uh, there's at least two sections in this chapter, and the very first part of the chapter is a prayer that Hannah prays unto God. All right, It's a, a, a recording of one of her prayers, just thanking God for the blessing of Samuel, for answering her prayer. So when you guys read through the chapter, if you haven't read it already, when you go through Hannah's prayer, write down all the things that stick out to you about what Hannah is saying about our great God. There's many attributes and characteristics that she's talking about that God does that we can definitely record and tells us about who God is and how great he is as well. So if you haven't read it yet, when you read Hannah's prayer, write down those things, but also through the rest of the chapter, write down those things that stick out to you and circling one main thing and let somebody know about it today. So if you have read and you're ready to learn uh, more about 1 Samuel chapter 2, we're going to get into the overview right now. Like I said, it starts off with Hannah's prayer unto God and it just uh, goes through uh, many things about how great our God is. And then in the second larger half of the chapter, uh, we get to meet these two guys called Hophni and Phinehas. Now Hophni and Phinehas were uh, Eli's sons. Remember, Eli's the priest who Samuel's working for in the tabernacle. And all because Eli was a priest does not mean he was a good father. And we see that in, re reflected in his sons. Hophni and Phinehas, the Bible says, now if you didn't know this term, it calls them the sons of Belial. All right, but I thought they were sons of Eli. Yes, they are sons of Eli. But when the Bible uses the term children of Belial or sons of Belial, uh, all that means, it doesn't mean there's actually a guy named Belial going about having kids. No, it, when you're called a child of Belial or a son of Belial, it means that you're a child of wickedness. Your heart is set uh, towards wickedness completely. That is what you seek to do. You only want to cause mischief and, and sin to abound wherever you're at. And that is exactly what Hophni and Phinehas are doing in the tabernacle of the Lord. They're supposed to be priests. Uh, helping sacrifices and, and, and other things to, to happen and help people to worship God. But because of their wickedness, it actually causes people to not want to worship God. The Bible says here uh, at the end, I believe, of chapter, uh, of not chapter, of, of one of the verses, it says that it got to the point where men abhorred the sacrifice of the Lord. Meaning that men just, ugh, they did not look forward to sacrifice unto God. I don't know if you guys have that kind of situation. I know my teens do. There are certain things you just don't look forward to, like, oh, I can't believe I got to go to school today, or oh, I can't believe I got a test today, or I got to watch uh, this show with my, my little brother and sister. You know, I don't want to watch this right now. There are differing things. Some of you guys, unfortunately, may feel that way about church, all right? And, that, and I'm, I hope that's not the case, but that is for some people who do not care about worshiping God or learning more about our Savior. They abhor doing that. They are like, ah, I just don't look forward to it. These people, and this is, you know what, let's just go right into it. This is the main thing for the chapter today that I want us to get is your testimony. What does your testimony not only say about you, all right, but what does it, uh, how does it influence those around you? As Christian guys, we have influence, all right? We should be an influence on those around us, and each and every one of us has a different realm of influence. You're going to meet people I'm never going to meet in my life Ever. But what does your testimony not only say about you, but what does it influence other people as well? Or, I said that wrong. How does it influence other people as well? We see Hophni and Phinehas, because they, their sin and wickedness was so great, it influenced people to not want to go to the tabernacle and sacrifice unto the Lord. They abhorred it. They're like, oh, I don't want to go there because I'm going to run into those guys and they're going to demand more uh, meat from my sacrifices than they should. And, and that's what that's all about there when talking about uh, taking uh, the meat from the sacrifices. is something that the priests were allowed to do, but Hophni and Phinehas were abusing that. But not only that, they were committing immoral acts 
with uh, the women that would come to the tabernacle as well. And it was something that was greatly seen. Uh, if not blatantly, it was something that everybody knew about. All right, It wasn't a secret. It was something everybody knew. Hophni and Phinehas were bad dudes. They were wicked dudes. Their testimony was poor, very poor, and it had a terrible influence on people who should want to come to the tabernacle to not only sacrifice but worship God as well. What does your testimony say about you? Um, in stark contrast, we see Samuel in this chapter as well. He loved God. He wanted to serve God, glorify God. He was doing everything right, and people uh, loved Samuel for that. They, they saw his testimony, and it actually made them not only praise Samuel, but also want to praise and worship their God as well. All right, you guys have two choices. You can be here. You can be a, a Hophni and Phinehas, or you can be like a Samuel. What does your testimony say about you? And then we come to the end of this chapter, and we see that uh, a man of God comes unto uh, Eli, and he just lets him know, hey, because of your passiveness in parenting your kids, because you are allowed their sin to just continue. See, Eli, he talks to his sons, but he doesn't do anything. He just kind of lightly reprimands them and says, hey, guys, don't you know what you're doing is wrong? But he doesn't take any action against them. He just lets them continue uh, to do wickedness in the tabernacle of the Lord. And so this man of God comes unto Eli and he lets him know, because you've allowed the sin of your sons to continue on, all right, and to be so great, I'm going to take away your family from the priesthood, all right? He, he says he's going to cut off his arm, not physically, it's a, it's a, uh, a metaphor, so to speak, just talking about how his family line is not going to have anyone that's going to be a priest moving on forward. It's going to be cut off and I'm going to raise up a priest unto God who will actually do what he's supposed to do and will be a great testimony unto the Lord and we know that to be Samuel in the future. And that's it for today's chapter, guys. All right, brief overview. I hope you guys wrote down a lot of things uh, from not only Hannah's prayer, but things that stood out to you that you could learn from just the situation with Hophni and Phinehas in contrast to Samuel. What does your testimony say about you? But more importantly, how does your testimony influence those around you? Do people around you seek to want to learn more about God? Do people around you uh, desire to, you know what, maybe I should start going to church more, all right? Because there's something different about Bobby or Susie or whatever your name is. I don't know who you guys are watching this video right now, but that's an important question. What does my testimony say about me and how does my testimony influence those around me? All right, guys, because that's a very important responsibility we have as Christians today. Uh, but other than that, we'll close the video with that. I uh, hope you guys are doing great. Tell somebody about what you got out of God's Word today. Continue that conversation about our great God. Stay safe, stay healthy. God bless.